All right, Coastal Bend, it's meteorologist Carly Smith here. We are live now and we've got a hot and humid day ahead of us. Highs are in the 90s, heat index values 101 to 111. This is for the Coastal Bend specifically. Windy conditions will have gusts 30 to 35 miles per hour. Additionally, we've got an elevated rip current risk and coastal flooding. If you're watching or curious about the rest of the Lone Star State, we're going to get into that forecast in just a second. But we are looking ahead to a very unsettled weather patterns. Hey y'all, the time now is 11 10 a.m. We are breaking down the storm potential across the Lone Star State. But this video will have a focus on the coastal bend in South Texas uh, here across our region. So what's up with this unsettled weather pattern? Will we get any rain? Well, I think we'll see some rain. Will we see rain every single day? No. Is there one day that looks better than others? Yes, and that day is Wednesday. So we'll break down everything you need to know in this live update. Right now, the unsettled pattern that comes from upper level energy. That upper level energy intensifies a little bit overnight tonight in the coastal bend. So we will have some upper level energy that may try to help some storms develop or help keep some storms going that are anticipated to develop later on this afternoon and evening. So this upper level energy is the reason for the unsettled weather pattern. There's a low well to our north, an upper level low. And then to the south, all of these little pieces are spinning off that upper level low and essentially allowing some more surface lows to develop and produce storms. And so that's really what we will be watching in the coming days. But starting today, uh, there's already been a line of storms that went through North Texas this morning. Another one is expected later on tonight that could impact even the Hill Country, Houston, and possibly even the Coastal Bend. But what we see is we get a break Thursday, but as we set up this downhill roller coaster ride, surround so the edge of the high and then down the low, that could provide another chance for a little unsettled pattern into the weekend, a chance for maybe a little bit cooler weather over the weekend, but we're not going to focus on that yet. We are going to get through Wednesday first before we really start talking about the weekend. And here is your severe weather outlook now. So this is your severe weather risk for Monday, Monday, May 26, 2025 or Memorial Day. So on this Memorial Day, there is an enhanced risk of severe thunderstorms across areas of the hill country and then north of there up toward Junction and San Angelo, uh, as well as Aveline. Dallas Fort Worth is under a marginal to a slight level two risk. And then Houston is also under a marginal level one risk as well as Bee County, Live Oak County and Referred County. These are the far northern areas of these counties. And I want to point out that it's not a 0% chance for storms in the coastal bend, but most of the activity is expected to stay just to our north. And so here is the Tuesday risk. It gets a little bit further south. And then finally, the Wednesday risk, all of South Texas is included. So let's talk about why. What we are watching is a cold front to our north. This cold front is going to stay to our north for the most part, but it's slowly going to be dipping south throughout the day. We also have a stationary boundary that is setting up. That's the cold front, essentially. Uh, there's a surface low, so I've got another map drawn with a little bit more details, but this is more for my long range forecasting. But I want to point out the dry line. So we have the cold front and the dry line. Both of these are storm developers. They create additional lift or boost in the atmosphere. So where those boundaries set up, you get some rain uh, that can form and you get thunderstorms that develop. But what I really want to point out in this is there's a little bit of a break, but also we have that line of convection that's moving into Louisiana now and across East Texas. What that's going to do is leave an outflow boundary and that outflow boundary may allow for some thunderstorms to develop into the hill country later on late this afternoon and into the evening. So this is now 530 on this Monday evening and we have some storms that try to develop along the dry line in Mexico that could potentially move into the valley or areas of South Texas, uh, far South Texas. This is very dependent on if a storm does develop. So around five to six, we're going to see those storms develop. Then we'll get an idea of which upper level currents they're tapping into. And they actually may move closer to the valley than necessarily our coastal bend counties. Areas to the north, if anyone is traveling or heading back home, check this out. We have that cluster of storms trying to develop into the hill country. 
This is along that potential uh, outflow boundary, as well as energy from the stationary boundary and the, the dry line. What you see, MCS, we like to call, I like to call this MCS season uh, across Texas. And what MCS season means is we get rounds of squall lines that develop. So you get clusters of storms developing on the dry line and frontal boundaries in the area. Then they develop into a squall line, which is essentially a mesoscale convective system that then is going to keep pushing that storm system across the Lone Star State to the east. Now, if this center of the mesoscale convective system can tap into one of these boundaries, specifically the cold front or stationary boundary, and ride it, that's when you can get a derecho to form, if it, it stays hanging out along that boundary. If it gets away from the boundary or too far south from the boundary or too far east of the dry line, then what you wind up with is a weakening line of thunderstorms. So there's a couple, there's another model I'm going to show you for today that I, I tends to do a better job. I tend to side with that model. But what I want to emphasize is in MCS season, it is nearly impossible to tell exactly where one of these MCSs will form until the thunderstorms get going. So once we get those more isolated cells to develop, and then we see them organized, then we will know where those storms are gonna go. But that will not happen until later on this afternoon. All you need to know now is there's a chance we get these squall lines uh, that set up and move east, southeast. Tonight, tomorrow night, and then Wednesday, we could see our own scattered pop-up activity. So 9.30, we have a chance of storms. There's another chance heading into tomorrow morning. The other model actually has a better chance uh, late overnight into Tuesday morning. What you see here is that boundary slowly sliding a little bit more south. We get a chance for a squall line developing again Tuesday night. This one has a better chance of moving into the coastal bend Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. So our storm chances go up a little bit Tuesday night into Wednesday morning, and then they stay elevated into Wednesday because that front slides south, but guess what? It's gonna go back to the north. However, there is another chance for another cold front as we head into the weekend. Again, we'll talk about that more Wednesday and so on. Right now we are looking at the Old Harbor Bridge. It is Monday and it is hot, 87 degrees, feels like 97. The biggest issue on this Memorial Day locally is coastal conditions. Hurricane season starts on June 1st. So uh, we are right around the corner. Our sea surface temperatures are heating up in the Gulf, but there is no activity at this time. So just like those squall lines I talked about, we have to have convection going on in the tropics in order to even be concerned uh, about tropical systems. And right now there's no obvious kind of convection that looks like it may organize into a low and then develop into a hurricane. So we're, we're not worried about hurricanes yet, but we are going to start keeping a close eye on those. And I'll do these live updates all the time during hurricane season. So don't you worry about that. Right now, on this Monday, though, it is going to be hot. We're talking heat index values around 100 to 111, specifically for Robstown, Kingsville, Alice, Falfurious. Those locations likely going to be hotter today. Our wind is out the south southeast, so with that being said, it's gusty, right? Those wind gusts do have us with small craft advisories in place across the coastal bend. And yeah, it's going to be breezy. That's a nice tailwind if you know people driving back to San Antonio, but otherwise it is just going to be rough. Uh, waves are rougher and there is an elevated rip current risk. Okay, this is what I really want to talk about. So this is our, our storm chances specifically for the coastal bend today. So one thing I do want to emphasize in this live update based on the headline I wrote and the little, the little blurb on Facebook or, or YouTube, uh, what you need to know is there's a daily chance of strong and severe storms in Texas. That has to do because we've got a stationary boundary slash a cold front and a dry line and an area of low pressure all right here. So what you see, this is actually our current radar. Well, it should have been. I didn't pause it. Oh, that's such a shame. Let's see if we can see it. So there's our current radar and there's how the radar is actually looking right now. So watch again closely. You're only gonna see the current radar for like right now and then this is the next future cast. So current radar transitions into future cast. They're very similar. So this is the model I tend to side more on. It's the HER. Uh, something some meteorologists like to say, live and die by the HER. I tend to lean more that way than I would like to admit, 
but it's a great model. It's an American model, and hopefully we can keep funding it and keep it doing well because it's our high range rapid refresh model that gives us the best information during storm season. So what I want to emphasize is that what you see is going to be one of those squall lines, right? It's move, it's staying along that stationary boundary, and so it's staying pretty sustained um, as it is moving across Louisiana and East Texas. Now, this is a bigger squall line as a stronger low pressure than what we saw several weeks ago that moved through Alice, right? But overall, very similar in the way they're built. Now, I've added CAPE onto this future cast. CAPE is convective available potential energy. What that is, is essentially heat, uh, but it's the potential for rising air. And you have to have rising air to get a cloud to form, to get a thunderstorm to form. We've got a lot of heat, and we know that in South Texas. Uh, there's also something called SIN, which kind of keeps the heat or the, the clouds from forming. Uh, SIN is convective inhibition. That's what that stands for. So it starts with a C, not an S. But what I want to point out is you start to see those storms developing closer to the dry line or the, the stationary boundary or where there might have been an outflow boundary left over from the storms that are now moving into Louisiana. So that outflow boundary would be right there near Waco and Austin, because what's gonna happen is these southeast winds push that outflow boundary a little bit further back to the north. So I don't think we see anything really developing right here in our area, uh, but yeah. So what I wanna point out is the closer you are to a boundary, the higher your storm chances are going to be. Then we start to see it lining up as a squall line. So this is when the energy may keep it going through San Antonio overnight toward Houston overnight. And then we will have to watch out for that energy potentially or that line potentially reaching us. But watch what happens as we lose daytime heat. We lose a lot of cape uh, because the storms are essentially using that energy. But that cape gets kind of squished down into South Texas, but notice the color transition from a red. I doled the color so we could see the radar, but the color transitioned from a red to more of an orange and yellow across South Texas. That's because it's nighttime. So we don't have as much cape at nighttime as we do during the daytime. And overall, everything just weakens overnight. Now, we could see a few storms that would be weakening overnight in our area. Now let's get to Tuesday. That cold front is a little bit further south. The Cape is a little bit more defined over west, the brush country, and then into south Texas. We see a squall line develop off that, that boundary, off the, the dry line. It's tracking along the cold front that's now stalling right there across Interstate 10 between San Antonio and Houston. This is now Wednesday at midnight. So this is Tuesday night heading into Wednesday morning as that boundary that's how far the model goes out so we can't see more but that's a good sign that that squall line would make it into south texas so our storm chances go up a little more on tuesday they go up a little bit more on wednesday as that line as that cold front gets further south it looks back to the north thursday so our rain chances go down but then they go back up again potentially friday so again heading into the second half of the week so wednesday once we get through our stormy weather wednesday We'll talk more about the weekend, the beach to bay forecast, everything you need to know. But thank you everyone for joining this live update. This is going to do it for now. You can still post your questions. I'll try to get to them. Uh, but otherwise, everyone have a great day. It is Memorial Day. So we want to also appreciate and thank uh, or be thankful for those that did sacrifice their lives for this country. Such an important day for our country and our military. So thank you to all of those serving, but a special thank you uh, to all those who do have family members that, that did essentially uh, make the ultimate sacrifice. So thanks again, and we'll be back tomorrow. See you then.